All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our public health echo for today. Uh, we'll start off with quick introductions. I'm Troy Jorgensen. I am the program manager here for Project Echo. And I am Janelle Davis. I am the presentation today, and uh, I am the communications officer for the state agency Silver State Health Insurance Exchange. All right, and we'll start with a short video clip uh, from the Nevada Public or uh, yeah Nevada Public Health Training Center um, that we'd like to share with you. So, just a second. There are 7 billion people on this mud ball. With that many people buzzing around, we're bound to collide. Where am I perfect? Did I wash my hands this morning? What did I eat today? Does my child need a vaccine? I don't remember what I did last night. In all the beauty and brilliance of humankind, collectively, we're a Petri dish. 40% of people don't wash their hands after they use the bathroom. So how many door handles and elevator buttons did you touch today? We're ubiquitous and busy. We're impulsive and experimental. And in our most intimate moments, regard for safety isn't, well, always of interest. Where we live, the air we breathe, our habits, the things we do every day have more impact on our health than genetics. And that's why there are public health professionals in the midst considering our well-being when we're not. These heroes go to the places others won't. They're on the front lines developing new programs and policies. They conduct and disseminate research on vital public health initiatives to keep us alive. They strive to make our communities equitable, healthy, and resilient here and abroad. They work with us, not against us. Pondering the public health of 7 billion people is no easy task, but it's happening right Right here, right now, at the University of Nevada, Reno, where students studying public health don't just learn, they implement and save lives. Today, we're recruiting the courageous. Join our team of heroes working for the greater good. All right. Um, so we'll get started with the presentation. Just a quick reminder, uh, feel free to use the chat function, or there's also a little Q&A bubble where you can write in questions. So if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, feel free to use that and we'll be able to address those. All right, good morning everyone. Thanks so much for joining. I'm really happy to be giving this presentation about the exchange and who we are and what we do to like-minded public health advocates and uh, community organizations. Um, we, so here's the, just a little bit of an agenda. Uh, we're gonna go over who we are, what we do, uh, overview of a state-based exchange, kind of where we are right now and uh, reviewing uh, plan year 2019 enrollment, and then where we're going for plan year 2020. We have some really big, exciting new things that are going on at Nevada Health Inc. and we wanna tell you about them. So here's our mission, uh, increase the number of insured Nevadans by facilitating the purchase and sales of health insurance that provides quality health care through the creation of a transparent, simplified marketplace of qualified health plans. And really the first six words spells out our mission that we can all get behind this idea to increase the number of insured Nevadans throughout the state. So a little bit about who we are. So I, I introduce myself as the communications officer of the state agency, the Silver State Health Insurance Exchange. Uh, but we operate the online marketplace known as Nevada Health Link. So Nevada Health Link is our brand. It's what we refer to when we're talking about the exchange and consumers resonate with Nevada Health Link. And so what we do is we connect eligible Nevada residents who are currently not insured. So they're not insured through their employer or they're not um, on Medicaid or Medicare, which is 64 and over. So we connect them to comprehensive health insurance coverage. Um, and these are Affordable Care Act certified qualified health plans. We also offer standalone dental plans through the exchange. And so what's important to know is that Nevada Health Link is the only place where you can enroll in 2020 coverage um, starting this year and beyond. And also it's the only place that uh, an individual can receive subsidy assistance to help offset monthly premium costs. So subsidies are basically financial assistance from the federal government. And again, that helps pay for um, your monthly premium for health insurance. 
Uh, we are now going to be a state-based exchange. So if, if you all remember, uh, perhaps back in uh, 2014, there was a dramatic failure. We were a state-based exchange, and based upon that failure, we then became what is known as a hybrid model. We were a state-based exchange using the federal platform. That federal platform is known as healthcare.gov. And now we are going back to being a state-based exchange, and we have, we have transitioned away from the federal platform healthcare.gov. And just a note here on the bottom, we, as a state agency, we are solely self-funded, so we do not use any state or federal funds to support our operations. All right, so this video, um, we work with a marketing vendor, Penna Powers, and uh, they helped design and implement this video. And it's a brand video that lives on our website to give an overview of who we are and what we do in a video format. Shopping for health insurance can be intimidating. There are a lot of confusing terms. But don't worry, Nevada HealthLink has some awesome people who really care about you and your family's health. So what is Nevada HealthLink? It's an online exchange for Nevada residents to shop for and enroll in qualified health plans that are Affordable Care Act compliant. It's run by a state agency called the Silver State Health Insurance Exchange. And we love what we do. We value innovation and putting people first. We come to work every day knowing that we're making a real difference in the lives of Nevadans. We help Nevadans find plans that fit their medical and family needs as well as their budget. What are the benefits of a state-based exchange? All of our plans are certified qualified health plans that cover the 10 essential health benefits. You also cannot be denied coverage if you have a pre-existing condition. So what's included in the 10 essential health benefits? The 10 essential health benefits include mental and behavioral health, maternity care, prenatal care, hospitalization, emergency services, outpatient care, and prescriptions. What about financial assistance to help pay for monthly insurance premiums? Going with a short-term or low-cost option outside of Nevada HealthLink isn't always the best idea because it might only cover you for a limited time or cost you a lot more in the long run. The majority of our enrollees qualify for federal financial help with monthly premiums, known as subsidies. NevadaHealthLink.com is your first stop when you have questions about anything related to health insurance. So check it out or give them a call. They're always here to help. All right. Okay, so this slide um, is titled Goodbye Healthcare.gov and that's because the Silver State Health Insurance Exchange is proud to announce that we have transitioned away from the federal technology platform as I stated, healthcare.gov. So what that means is for this open enrollment period that starts on November 1st, uh, consumers will no longer use healthcare.gov to enroll in a qualified health insurance plan on the exchange. So this is um, very exciting and it's been about four years in the making. Uh, we are a fully operational state-based exchange and uh, Nevada consumers have uh, been invited to claim their migrated user accounts. And so the data migration of this transition project was probably the most difficult and um, the most worrisome, but uh, it's been a success and there, the data has been migrated over from healthcare.gov to nevadahealthlink.com. And so we've invited those existing consumers who currently had a plan on healthcare.gov to claim their account so that they can right now log in. Uh, and there's a couple things they can do on the new platform at nevadahealthlink.com. Once they claim their account, they'll log in. And uh, right now they can uh, designate a, an agent or broker or a certified enrollment counselor, also referred to as navigators. And they can also sign up for a, what's called auto re-enrollment. So if they had already signed up for auto re-enrollment through healthcare.gov, there's no action needed. This is just if you haven't done so already. Uh, and then we also went through a rigorous training process. So all of our agents and brokers and um, navigators have been trained to help with enrollment assistance on the exchange 
for Plan Year 20. And we're also excited that you know we have over 600 uh, brokers throughout the state offering free in-person assistance for this enrollment. So lots of things have been happening. Uh, you can see right here that open enrollment begins on November 1st and it goes through December 15th of this year. Um, <laughs> next slide, <laughs> thanks. All right, so why did we do this exchange? Why did we make this massive decision to transition away from the federal technology platform? So a couple of reasons. The consumer reasons for transitioning is hopefully it will be an improved customer service experience. There's also, um, along with the federal tech, or the, not federal, excuse me, along with the technology platform, we also uh, signed on with our vendor called Get Insured to offer this enrollment uh, platform. And they are also our call center. So along with an improved streamlined user experience, uh, we are gonna have a single call center that should allow for more efficient complaint resolution. We also should see an increased program integrity. So that means direct access to individualized enrollment and the data, which allows our exchange to address common problems, um, sometimes like dual simultaneous enrollments in multiple QHPs, which is qualified health plans. Um, and so that access to consumer data in real time is extremely important. Being on healthcare.gov, we did not know who our enrollees were, so we had to pretty much blanket market the state. So it's really exciting that we're actually going to see who our consumers are so we can directly market to those people who may not know that they're eligible for a plan on the exchange. Um, the main reason of why we made this decision to transition uh, away from healthcare.gov is because the rent was essentially too high. Healthcare.gov started charging states to use their eligibility and enrollment platform. And if we remained on that platform, we were going to be insolvent. We were going to completely go away um, because it was going to cost us annually about $12 million a year. And then now, being a state-based exchange, it'll be about five million a year. So really big difference in cost. And um, we will start to see a cost savings of about four million per year starting in fiscal year 21 alone. So really exciting things, really good for the state and for our consumers. And hopefully it will be, you know, a lot of different innovative tools are going to be available on the platform. So we're hoping that the, the actual enrollment process and filling out the application is going to be a lot more streamlined and easier for everybody. All right, and so this video is what we're calling a welcome transition video, a message from our executive director, Heather Korbulik. This video lives on our homepage of NevadaHealthLink.com, and it was designed as a tutorial for consumers to know what to do about their, their migrated user account, and then also for new people coming onto the platform and kind of what's different this year. Welcome to the new Nevada HealthLink, Nevada's online health insurance exchange where qualified Nevadans can shop for and enroll in comprehensive, affordable care at compliant health and dental plans, all in one convenient location. Nevada HealthLink is the only place to get access to financial assistance to help offset your monthly premiums and get free help from certified enrollment professionals in your area. For Plan Year 2020, the open enrollment period starts November 1st, 2019 and goes through December 15th. You'll need to use NevadaHealthLink.com instead of healthcare.gov to shop for and enroll in health insurance that begins January 1st of 2020. The new site is designed to provide you with tools and resources that streamline the enrollment process and will help you get connected to affordable coverage for you and your family. If you are already enrolled in a plan through NevadaHealthLink.com, your existing user account will be migrated to the state-based exchange. You should have received an email with a unique access code to claim your user account. We encourage you to claim your account, sign up for auto re-enrollment, and designate a licensed enrollment professional to assist you. Starting in September, you'll be able to claim your existing account. For newly eligible Nevadans who have not previously enrolled, we are thrilled that you're making the decision to get covered through Nevada Health Link. Beginning October 1st, you'll be able to go to NevadaHealthLink.com to review health insurance plans that are designed to suit your medical and budgetary needs. You'll also be able to connect with a free, local, licensed enrollment professional who can help answer any questions. 
Starting November 1st through December 15th, you'll be able to enroll in qualified health plans with the best benefit packages. Your coverage will begin January 1st, 2020. Nevada HealthLink's Customer Assistance Center is available to answer your questions and help you locate a certified enrollment professional in your area so you can get the assistance that you need to make the right choices about your health options. Please call us at our new phone number, 1-800-547-2927. We're here because we care about linking you to affordable, qualified health insurance plans that cover all 10 of the essential health benefits. Again, open enrollment for 2020 begins November 1st, 2019 and ends December 15th at midnight. Awesome, thanks. So in that video, Heather mentioned a claiming account and receiving an access code. So on September 4th of this year, Nevada HealthLink soft launched the state-based exchange platform. So people were able to go onto the platform and claim their accounts. So what we did, uh, is plan a, a pretty rigorous communications plan and we sent consumers uh, email and mailed information uh, letters that contained this access code and so when you go to when you open that email then there was a link provided which was onto the platform and there was a, a, an opportunity to put in your access code and so we've been sending multiple reminders to Nevadans who were supposed to receive this, who you know were existing enrollees, and uh, to this day we have just over eleven thousand people who have claimed their migrated user account. So um, I think about fifty thousand emails were sent. Uh, so we're still looking for people to claim their accounts. What's important to know is if they were signed up for auto re-enrollment and they were you know, an existing enrollee on the exchange and they take no action, they will still be enrolled in that plan come plan year 2020 or this open enrollment season. Um, they, they won't have to do anything, they'll still be enrolled as long as they're paying for their premium. So that's important to know and, and a big piece of the, the data migration as a whole. Also what's available right now, so that was in September, now in October, uh, on the 3rd, we uh, opened what we're calling window shopping. And so this is an opportunity for consumers to go onto the platform and anonymous plan shop. So basically compare plans and prices that are available. This is also open to all of all consumers, all Nevadans, so you don't have to have a previous plan to, to go on and anonymous, anonymously shop. So that's really exciting because healthcare.gov uh, actually didn't offer window shopping until much, much later, um, I think a week before open enrollment began. Um, this this uh, date here, the 1015 to 1031, is, is kind of a, an internal project management piece, uh, but basically what's happening is we are doing a, a batch job, so it has to do with data, and we're doing like catch-up files and, and making sure all the data has been successfully migrated over. And so what happens on the 15th is the platform will technically be frozen, and so you'll actually still be able to claim your account and you'll still be able to window shop. You just won't be able to designate a broker or make any changes in the platform. You'll have to wait to actually enroll or make changes um, on November 1st. And so November 1st is when open enrollment begins. And then that's when you have the opportunity to edit or modify your application data and then actually enroll and, and get an, enrolled in a plan. All right, so kind of this, this slide talks a little bit about where we are right now and what happened after plan year 2019. So the final plan selections, you know, people always ask me, well, how many people are on the exchange or how many people are accessing, you know, qualified health plans through Nevada Health Link? That's the number. Uh, people who selected a plan was about 83,449. So just shy of 84,000. You can see here just some statistics of our population. Uh, I think what's interesting to note is that the uh, highest number of enrollees are between the ages of 35 to 54. And then we also, coming in a, a close second, is the 50 plus generation who's not quite eligible for Medicare. So lots of people uh, are 
you know, getting the message that having health insurance is important and that these qualified, these ACA certified plans are, are still a necessity. Um, our plans are income based. So it's, it's based upon the subsidies that you receive from the financial government um, and your eligibility is all determined on income. And so Nevada health link plans are available for people who are 138% uh, to the 400% of the federal poverty level. We have a federal poverty level chart located on NevadaHealthLink.com because I think the number one question that people always ask us is, well, how much is it gonna cost me? It's not affordable. So we have data who is, you know, is based on averages, but it's really, really dependent on everyone's unique situation and how much money they're making and what their yearly household income is going to be, that, that estimation, so. Next slide, please. <laughs> All right, so this is just a graph to show you guys uh, our year-over-year -year enrollment. So the exchange started back in, well, it was put into Nevada Revised Statute in 2011. We started operations in 2013, and then we started enrolling people. And you can see we, we had a, just a small amount of people, about 38,000 in plan year 2014. And again, remember, that's when the dramatic failure happened and there was a lot of issues, um, but we weren't the only one. There were a lot of states who had who had issues. And uh, now, you know, we're we're in 2020 coming up on plan year 2020 and we've learned a lot from those mistakes. And you can see here that there's been a, a year over year growth in enrollment, again, showing the necessity for these types of plans and the affordability. Okay, so this slide gives you kind of a geographical picture of our enrollment throughout the state. You'll see that the highest uh, enrollment is in Clark County, obviously, that's where the majority of our population resides. And then coming in second is Washoe County. Um, and then you'll see, I think it's Douglas and Carson City and Lyon County that are the third. So not a ton of people in the in the rural part of the state who are enrolled, but we, you know, obviously want to continue to reach out to that population because th this may be very well be an option for them. Um, I just wanted to note here, sorry, really quick that um, a recent study just came out uh, from the Gwynn Center. It's a report on based on 2017 data of the uninsured throughout the state. And there are 400,000 Nevadans who are still uninsured and about 100,000 of them are eligible for um, you know, subsidies and reside in Clark County. About 14,000 of them reside in Washoe County who are uninsured and could be eligible for uh, subsidies. So. This is why we're doing this. We need your help to get the word out and let people know that this could be an option for them. Was there a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, so how do you reach out to Nevadans that may not know about this option? Okay, so am I, they can hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, I am getting to that. We, we have a very robust uh, communications and advertising, marketing, and outreach campaign. And we, we actually partner with brokers and navigators throughout the state. So we, tend, we attend uh, community statewide events and uh, we, we print educational literature. We do things like this where we present to um, community partnerships who talk to different constituents throughout the state. So there's a lot of things going on and um, part of why I'm here today is to provide these resources so that you can have the educational literature and our phone number to reach out to those people who are asking. So I will talk a little bit more about that um, in the presentation and that's actually the next slide. Um, and I have a question about you concerning uh, yeah. rural enrollment. Yes. So, um, Obviously, enrollments can be lower because the populations in those counties are just lower Small, in general. Yeah. Um, but those populations are also lower income, so they're probably qualified for Medicaid. So yes. is that possibly a factor as to why the enrollment's lower? Yeah, yeah, I would say, I mean, you nailed it on the head. I mean, the populations are smaller, they're harder to reach, 
I think the, the issue and the conversation that we continue to have year over year about the rural populations is the access to care and the provider network. And because they are lower income, most of them are on Medicaid, but it's a sweet spot, right? It depends, if you have an income change, it's very well possible that you could be dropped off yeah. of Medicaid and yeah. then now eligible for Nevada Health Link. Mm -hmm. And so we are actually working very closely with uh, the Division of Welfare and Supportive Services which is essentially Nevada Medicaid. And uh, what happens is there's an account transfer in the platform, So it, it, and that's the eligibility tool. So if it determines that you're eligible for Medicaid, then we send a notice over to Medicaid, and then they can you know, reach out to that consumer, letting them know, hey, we found out that you're eligible for Medicaid, mm -hmm. and then vice versa if you're eligible yes. for the exchange. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that hasn't happened in the past, so we're excited to, to collaborate with that agency to get those communications over to those people. So, mm -hmm. um, because there are so many of them who are uninsured and yeah. don't know about this. Great, yeah. okay, excellent. Um, and, and I'll just say too, we do have some navigators located in Elko, and um, we're always happy to mail any of our educational literature to these you know, FQHCs who are out in the rural areas or, or anybody really who wants our information, we're, we're happy to share because we want to get that, that message out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I can't go to the next slide. All right, I'm just going to start talking because, <laughs> um, so advertising, oh wait. I'm sorry. All right, let's talk about open enrollment 2020 first. So um, this is what people need to know going into this open enrollment period. So um, there are three carriers this year who are going to offer 27 qualified health plans on the exchange. Those three carriers are listed here. So Health Plan of Nevada, which is HPN, Silver Summit, which is a Centene product and known to consumers as Ambetter. And then we're, we're excited to welcome back Anthem HMO Colorado, and I think they're dubbed now Anthem Nevada. Um, so really excited to offer three different carriers this year and 27 plans, that's exciting. So for the counties listed here, Clark, Nye, and Washoe, they'll have the choice from all 27 plans offered through the three carriers. And then for the remainder, remaining counties listed here, it's about 14 of them. Uh, they will have a choice of 17 plans from the two carriers, Silver Summit and Anthem Colorado. We also offer, as I said in the beginning, uh, standalone dental plans. And this year there are 17 SADPs from six different carriers, and they're listed here. And I'll just put a little asterisk here that um, this year it's really exciting. I used to always get the question, well, can I just get a dental plan? and without a medical qualified health plan and before the answer was no but this year we're excited you know as a state-based exchange that you can actually enroll in a dental plan without being enrolled first in a qualified health plan um so okay here the finalized average rate change on exchange and again this is average and it's weighted is 1.6 increase this is a really exciting sign of stability within the marketplace because if you recall in 2017, the rate increase on exchange on average was about 38%. So to only see 1.6% is really exciting and uh, that means the prices aren't really going up very much for people. And then here at the bottom, um, this year we granted funds to eight different navigator agencies and so the majority of them are located in Clark County in Las Vegas area, and then the rest are in the north uh, with the one in Elko that I mentioned. Um, and then we, ha we also grant funds to uh, licensed brokers throughout the state, and so we have five broker grantees. And we like to highlight them. Uh, they offer different storefronts, so people can actually come and enroll and get free in-person assistance to go through the application and enrollment process. Okay, all right, there's the advertising, marketing, and outreach slide. This is the fun stuff. Um, this is my world. As the communications officer, I oversee our marketing and advertising campaigns. And this year we're doing something a little bit different. In the past, if, if you remember us seeing us everywhere, 
because we are everywhere, um, our theme was you can't afford not to be insured. <laughs> so this year we changed things up a little bit and uh, we're focusing on how it feels to be a Nevada Health Link enrollee. And so the theme is called Peace of Mind and I'll show you a little video clip of what that looks like in a second. Um, basically, we really wanted to highlight that having comprehensive coverage on Nevada Health Link gives you you know, eliminates that sense of worry. Like you can have peace of mind knowing that you are covered with this insurance plan that, you know, protects you from financial ruin if a medical emergency were to occur. Um, again, really focusing on the messaging points of gaining consumer trust, that we're your resource, we're here for you. Insurance is confusing, right? We wanna, we wanna help you through that process and you're not alone because it is confusing and there's a lot of things trickling down from the federal government, so we're here to help you through the process. Um, and then again, highlighting the streamlined user experience and the consumer ben benefits of now being a state-based exchange and no longer using healthcare.gov. So uh, you should actually start to see our ads here in Reno. Um, we are doing a tra traditional TV advertising campaign. We're, we're in print media. We are in social media. We will take over your digital search page. Um, we are everywhere. Um, as far as outreach is concerned, it's, it continues to obviously be a very important and critical piece of, of marketing and advertising to educate consumers about this extremely confusing topic. We have over 300 different stakeholders and um, community partners, and so we're always looking to gain more insight on who we should be partnering with and sharing information with. So please, please reach out to me. We're happy to, to always do presentations and continue to educate um, everyone statewide. And then I did mention the navigators and brokers um, and our community partners. We do grant funds to navigators. You can apply, I believe it's at the beginning of the year and then we close that in about May timeframe, I, I feel like. So um, we do have a navigator program manager located in our Henderson office. And so if that sounds of interest to you or different agencies that you work with, um, we're happy to provide that information because they are instrumental in getting our uh, educational literature and just educating the, the public about open enrollment and health insurance. Um, we are huge on the media beat right now. Uh, Heather, our executive director, and I travel the state and we're on all of the news stations and in, in the papers because again, I still run into people who don't know who Nevada Health Link is. And so we're trying to be everywhere and provide as much information as we can. Okay, so here is a little clip of our advertising campaign. Here's to the feeling you get when someone's got your back because sometimes you don't see it coming and sometimes the writing is on the wall. So that's why we're here for you. The ones who know what it is to be human. We're for the underinsured, the prenatal, the prescripted, the pre-existing condition ridden, downtrodden, but never down for the count, extraordinary people of Nevada. It's time for some peace of mind. We're Nevada Health Link, and we're here to get you covered. How do people describe their health coverage through Nevada Health Link? Yes! Qualified health plans with true peace of mind and with coverage for the 10 essential health benefits, including prescriptions, that's something you can get excited about. How do people describe their health coverage through Nevada Health Link? Qualified health plans with true peace of mind and with coverage for the 10 essential health benefits, including maternity and newborn care, you can rest easy. How do people describe their health coverage through Nevada Health Link? Qualified health plans with true peace of mind and with coverage for the 10 essential health benefits, including hospitalization, you can stay positive. How do people describe signing up for health coverage through Nevada Health Link? <laughs> Qualified health plans with true peace of mind and with many enrollees qualifying for financial assistance, that's something you can celebrate. Así es como se siente cuando alguien te respalda, porque a veces lo que va a suceder es lo inesperado. Por eso estamos aquí para ti. 
el vulnerable, el valioso, los que saben cómo se siente ser humano y el prenatal, el oprimido pero nunca derrotado. Estamos aquí para la gente extraordinaria de Nevada. Es hora de sentirse tranquilo. Somos Nevada HealthLink. Compara planes y precios ahora. And so, yeah, just to note, we do produce all of our advertisements and print media in English and in Spanish, and we are in the Hispanic Latino market. And I also just wanted to mention that I realize that other people speak other languages, and so our whole website you can actually translate into any language that you choose through the Google Translator tool. Um, we're also working with the Asian Resource Community Development Center to produce some uh, printed literature in the higher speaking uh, languages of, I believe, Vietnamese, Chinese, maybe Mandarin, uh, like in the Las Vegas area. So we're always happy to work with people who are requesting different things. And um, yeah, so just always reach out and, and let, let us know what you need because we, again, want to get that message out uh, to the different uh, languages spoken within our state. All right, so there's mostly good news for the exchange, just so you guys know, but there always comes challenges uh, when it comes to dealing with the federal government. <laughs> so here's a list of our uh, 2020 enrollment challenges. The price index changes, this stems from um, a federal rule change that is known as the Notice of Benefit and Payment Parameters. Um, and so what this index change means is that Nevadans could possibly see an increase of an average of about $200 per year for their premiums. Uh, but again, I don't know who this is going to affect yet, and we are working with the Nevada Division of Insurance to do some analysis to see what that cost will actually be and how Nevadans will be affected. So stay tuned on that. Uh, Short-term limited duration plans, I think you saw this in our uh, our welcome video. We talked a little bit about short-term limited duration plans and that they're sometimes referred to as skinny plans. And we just want to put a little asterisk here that, you know, be careful when you are, your constituents are buying these short-term plans because they could underwrite and charge you more. And they also could, uh, they, they're, they're not ACA certified, so they don't cover the 10 essential health benefits, and you could be denied if you do have a pre-existing condition if you sign up for one of these plans. So um, we're just trying to highlight that the most comprehensive benefit package is through Nevada HealthLink. Uh, association health plans, this is something that happened last plan year, and so basically uh, the, the chamber organizations kind of banded together and offered association health plans through the chambers. Um, but there are some rule changes that happened this year surrounding AHPs, and I'm not even going to begin to explain that because it's extremely complicated. And if you want to learn more about these AHPs or you have questions about them, I will just refer you to the Nevada Division of Insurance because they are regulating those. All right, um, same with HRAs, health reimbursement accounts. Uh, this is new this year that um, employers may offer an HRA. And so um, we are working with other states to provide a tool to determine if you're eligible for an HRA. Uh, but again, this is kind of a last minute rule change trickling down from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. But uh, we will have a page on our website at NevadaHealthLink.com with a fact sheet so that folks know a little bit about what to expect when it comes to HRAs. Public charge, probably the most important challenge or item on this page. Basically, an individual who is likely to become independent or sorry, dependent on public benefits could be a public charge. And what's important to note. And this has gone, in, it was a proposed rule, it has been finalized, so it is implemented now. What's important to note is that health benefits are, that are not included in determining if you're a public charge is the Affordable Care Act. So if you are accessing subsidies through Nevada HealthLink, you will not be, this doesn't affect you, you will not be considered a public charge. Um, also, if your kids are enrolled through CHIP and Nevada Checkup, Keep them, keep them on Nevada Checkup. Don't disenroll them. This 
they, they are not determined a public charge. And then also Medicare Part D. What the problem is with this public charge, and some of you may have heard this on the news recently, is that it's creating a chilling effect for people who, um, you know, are wanting to become become a legal citizen or get their green card and they are nervous that they are accessing public benefits and then deciding to not access them anymore. And so it's, we really need your help in, in educating folks because it's, it's creating a, a massive chilling effect and we'll probably see a decrease in enrollment because of it. Um, we do have a page on our website dedicated to public charge, and we have tools available in English and in Spanish, um, like, like fact sheets and FAQs, so um, please feel free to use those at your will. Um, another challenge you guys have probably heard about is the Texas versus Azar court case that is in the 5th District Court. Um, there's not really anything going on right now except that this is people are saying that a, a judge in Texas is saying that the Affordable Care Act is, um, oh gosh, what was the word? Unconstitutional. That used? Unconstitutional, thank you. How could I forget? It's <laughs> favorite word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, they are trying to, again, dismantle the Affordable Care Act, but it will take years and years and years for this to happen. But obviously, if it does, it will be detrimental to millions and um, thousands within our state. So we are keeping a close eye and always analyzing the different policies that are going on within within Washington, D.C. that trickle down to our state. So good news is we're not tied to healthcare.gov anymore, and um, we can make our own policy changes. So, All right. So this slide is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I've, I've said it throughout this presentation, we need your help to reach our goals. And so part of what we wanna do is engage uh, with returning consumers. We always want to maintain um, the enrollees that are currently accessing our plans. And then we always wanna go back to that mission of reducing the uninsured throughout the state which I think is about 14% right now, um, Nevadans who are uninsured. And so we wanna help get them connected and see if this is a resource for them. So a way that you can do that to help us is connect your community to the good news about our rates and our affordability and you know, follow us on all the social media channels and reshare and you know, get connected to our educational literature. And then we're always happy to discuss new ideas on how to collaborate. Um, I think, yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, this, this slide, I, I do want to point out that we have a new phone number. It's listed there. We no longer have the, I think it was 855-7NV link was our old phone number. So this is our new phone number. We are working with a new customer assistance call center. And so um, make sure you get that phone number out to your people. <laughs> um, the other one, what will happen if you call the old phone number, you'll just get redirected to this phone number. So um, our email is listed here as well. And then obviously our website that is a wealth of information, has a lot of good info on it. Um, I would also recommend to go to our media and marketing asset page. You can see all of the videos that I showed today. and. Um, you know, get connected to that, that fact sheet or the uh, public charge FAQs. So I really appreciate everyone's time. I think I filled up the whole 45 minutes. Um, and I'll take questions if anyone has questions at this time. Excellent. Yeah, so we've got about 15 minutes left. So uh, yeah, we'd be happy to hear your questions. I see one already came in through the Q&A function. So use the Q&A box or the, the chat as well, uh, and we'd be happy to hear from you. So would you say that this is, a sim is similar to Covered California or much more resourceful? Yeah, so basically Covered California is this, the same thing as Nevada HealthLink. It's just Covered California is offered to residents of the state of California. And so a lot of times when people say they don't know what Nevada HealthLink is, I, I kind of mentioned Covered California. I said, oh, have you heard of Covered California? It's Obamacare in California. Nevada HealthLink is the same in Nevada. And so as far as it being a better resource, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's your own opinion. <laughs> Obviously, California is a much bigger state and they have 
uh, a lot more people enrolled on their platform and they have a lot more people working for their exchange. So Nevada Health Link is, is much smaller and we're actually the smallest operating exchange for staff comparison uh, in the nation. I think we have 13 people right now and uh, we're, we're hiring more people because we have to hire people to absorb the functions that healthcare.gov performed. So I think we'll have a staff of about 23 people and the average exchange has like 85, I believe. So, so we're pretty small. Um, which is why we need your help to get the word out. Um, but yes, it's Nevada Health Link is the the exchange in the state of Nevada, which is covered California and California. No more questions? Yeah, any other questions? I can um, put my contact information on here too if it is on the website though, so okay. just so you guys Should know. We, um, yeah, why don't we do a little, do you want to do like a live demonstration? Sure. Right so NevadaHealthLink.com. There it is. Makes me happy we're like the first one to come up. <laughs> Search engine optimization. Yes, but we have a robust SEO campaign. So you got a little countdown for enrollment. Yeah, we have 20 days left. I can't believe it. And again, there's only that 45-day window for people to enroll. Um, so let's see. If you go to partner resources and then you go to, you, you can't, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> some things around. All right. Media and marketing assets. That's the page I was talking about, and there's my contact info. If you click on my name, you should be able to email me. If it doesn't work, then, yeah. okay. And then there's all of our branding guides, our logos, and then videos and different fact sheets and things like that, so. All right, it looks like we do have another question. Uh, how are you approaching the public charge issues for enrollment? Yeah, so again, I just want to reiterate that if you are accessing an exchange plan and you are using subsidies, that you are not deemed a public charge, and so it doesn't affect you. Um, but what we're doing is we're working with the Division of Welfare and Supportive Services. Uh, we have their fact sheet as well as ours on our website and a whole de page dedicated to public charge. Um, to educate people on basically what is a public charge and then who would be affected within our state and the health benefits that are not included. So um, that's kind of how we're approaching it right now and obviously talking about it in all of our PR opportunities um, and just getting the word out that there is a significant chilling effect that's associated with this public charge and so the more we talk about it and the more education and resources we can provide people, the better. Good questions. Yeah. <laughs> We've got plenty of time left, so please keep thinking of your questions and write those in. I don't know if anyone has questions about the transition or no longer using healthcare.gov this year. Um, hopefully that, that all made sense. Um, Cause it's not, the call to action for consumers hasn't really changed. You can still go to NevadaHealthLink.com. We're still recommending you get uh, free local certified assistance from a broker or a navigator within the state. So none of that has has changed, but the the experience to actually go through the application is different and more streamlined, but it will look different and they won't go over to healthcare.gov. If someone does go to healthcare.gov, they'll be redirected to Nevada Health Link. Oh, looks like there's a question. Um, how does this work for minors? I noticed on one of the slides it said 14% of enrollees were under the age of 18. Is the process different because they are minors? That's a really good question. Um, 
I might have to get back to you on that. I know that obviously you, if you are under 18 that you would be eligible for Nevada checkup in the state of Nevada. So um, yeah, I, I know that we, on one of those slides, we do say the percentage of under 18, yeah, 14%. So this might be a unique situation um, that deemed them not eligible for Nevada checkup. So um, to my knowledge, the, the process isn't necessarily different for minors because you know, I thought that you were eligible for Nevada checkup if you are under 18. So I will look into that. That's a really good question. We'll give it another minute or two here. Oh, it looks like Dylan. Is Nevada Health Link insurance supplemental or is it a full insurance plan? So Nevada Health Link is a, we offer full qualified health plans. Um, there's nothing supplemental about these plans. That's, that's all to do with Medicare. I think you guys have heard that there's like supplemental plans through Medicare. So if you are insured through your employer, um, Nevada Health Link wouldn't necessarily be an option for you because we don't offer the supplemental insurance. This is for people who don't have any insurance, insurance at all that would be eligible and it's a comprehensive benefit package. Um, just a comment, I think what you're doing is great. Thank you for everything you're doing for the community. Oh, well, thank you, that's very sweet. Thanks for all you guys do too. It's all about a collaboration here, so it's a team effort. Anything else we can answer for you today? I'm just texting my colleague about that minor hmm. <laughs> to see if I can get an answer. All right, well, I do want to uh, just share a quick survey that we'd like you to complete. Uh, just uh, wrapping up your, your thoughts, seeing if we met the objectives and if you were satisfied with, with the presentation today. Um, so just for our own internal uh, quality improvement. We'll wait another little bit here, see if anybody has any other questions that pop into their mind. I thought of something. <laughs> um, we are always looking for testimonials. Testimonials are powerful. They uh, resonate with the community and for some reason it's been a struggle to get people to tell us their story or their their success story or experience with having health insurance on Nevada Health Link. Um, we have a couple on our website that lived in Las Vegas who did a full um, testimonial campaign for us, but uh, we're always looking for people to tell us their story. Um, so, you know, feel free if you know anybody who's willing to tell us about, you know, their health insurance uh, journey. Uh, and getting covered and the importance of getting covered. Uh, I'd love to talk to them and we're always, you know, wanting to do another kind of campaign uh, about testimonials. They're effective and it's also something that we can give our congressional delegation when they're on the floor talking about the importance of the Affordable Care Act. So uh, reach out to me if that, you know, perks anybody's interest. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, do you have interns or accept internships for a semester? So good question. We are hiring right now, not interns, but um, 
you know, as a state agency, we are allowed to to hire uh, interns. We don't currently have um, like a, an intern project that we're working on, but uh, I would, I would reach out to uh, Tiffany Davis, who is our executive assistant at the exchange, and, and inquire. All right, I think we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up there for today then. Um, we will be back, uh, what will be the date on that one? It'll be uh, November 8th. We'll be back with the next Public Health Echo Clinic. So hope you'll all join us then. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you.